making sure that you have somebody to talk to. You can call, you can pick up the phone, they're gonna pick up the phone, they're gonna answer the phone. You can send them an email, they're gonna respond to that email within the same day or 24 hours. That's what I mean about small mom and pop billing company down the road. Welcome back everybody to our billing series, part two, what to look for in your billing team. Now, when I talk about what to look for in your billing team, as you know from part one, I'm highly, highly encouraging that you outsource billing. Let the experts do it. That's one last, there's one last thing you have to be worried about so you can focus on building a thriving practice. When you outsource your billing, there are some nightmares though. There are some bad companies out there, which is good for us because it makes our company look really, really good because the way they operate is they go after the low hanging fruit and they have horrible communication. They don't want to pick up the phone and talk to you. They don't assign somebody specifically to your office or your account. You get different random people doing work for you. If you run into those things, you need to leave that billing company. So what to look for in your billing team look for the following when you outsource billing and of course these are the things that we do because truth be told back in 2002 2003 i stopped treating patients for about four months and i did full-time billing i fired two of my three billers for all kinds of reasons and i was forced to be my company's biller but i thought to myself hey if I master this, I'm going to know the physical therapy and billing component and what better to run a practice with with that knowledge, right? So it was terrible. I will tell you, I was miserable. I would have stabbed myself with a butter knife if it was been effective to get me out of there. It wasn't though, because I owned the practice. I couldn't go anywhere. So it was awful. I learned my ruler and posting payments and making collection calls and 59 modifiers and 51 and all these different things. It is a racket, man. It is a racket. It is rigged for the insurance companies to always try to make out. But once you learn the rules and once you know how to communicate with manners and being polite, but being assertive, assertive politeness, you start getting what you want. When you understand that the secret to effective billing is educating your staff around you, not necessarily your billing team. Let me tell you, they know how to do it. It's educating your front desk, your patient registration person to be extremely detailed in collecting the appropriate information. Your insurance verification officer, extremely detailed in documenting what they're being told and what they find when they verify the insurance, whether it be online or by phone. The physical therapist and the PTAs and the PTs and oh my gosh, what they don't know is just uh, mind blowing. They should really understand a lot more about billing and collections than they do. They should really understand that they have a greater responsibility to code document and fill out the document paperwork appropriately. They're not billers, they're not billing, but without their supportive documentation and their thorough documentation of what they've done, um, and timely, oh my gosh, timely submission, it affects everything financially within your practice. So they have to understand that they're part of a whole. They're, they're, they're a spoke in a wheel to keep that wheel true and round. All the spokes need to be tight. So with that said, if you're going to have a very successful uh, billing team outsourcing, you want to look for the following things. Number one, do they assign a team leader to your account? This is the one person who's responsible for everybody who touches your account. You don't wanna to have to be talking to the insurance verification officer, uh, the cash posting officer, the billing officer, or the collection, op collection officer. You don't wanna to have to run around, who do I talk to? You need a team leader. Number two, do they mandate monthly meetings? All of our clients, it's mandatory in our contract that you get off the bus of busyness and you sit down with your billing team leader and you review your accounts. We're going to review your AR account. We're going to review your, your, your error reports. We're going to review, review your unbilled uh, uh, list, anything that was, couldn't, couldn't be billed for whatever reason. And we're going to give advice and direction on how to actually improve the front end of billing, which is the front desk. I don't know of any other billing company in the country that does that. They are going to want to get paid for that. We don't charge anything for that. That is absolutely our benefit to you because if we can get the front end running smoother, better, cleaner, it's going to make the billing a lot easier and simpler for us. We know how many accounts our staff can work. We build our 
billing teams in pyramids so that you always feel like you're attached to a small mom and pop billing company just down the road from your clinic who's a part of your team who cares about your success and your well-being they're not you're not a number to us and that that's the, the next thing you should look for making sure that you have somebody to talk to you can call you can pick up the phone they're going to pick up the phone they're going to answer the phone you can send them an email they're going to respond to that email within the same day or 24 hours that's what I mean about small mom and pop billing company down the road. Communication, communication, communication. Communication is the universal solvent to all problems. We know this. You must have access to your billing team leader on a weekly, daily basis, whenever you need to ensure that you're comfortable with what's going on. To be honest with you though, truth be told, because you're having your monthly meetings and you're going over your reports and data on a regular basis, you don't have to go shopping around. What's my AR look like? What's my unbilled look like? What what errors are we running into? Because you don't have to worry about that. You're getting told that, you're getting informed that. We're bringing it to you. You don't even have to go hunting it for us. You have far less to deal with. You have far less questions, concerns, uh, issues in general. Now, every now and again, something's going to come up that was a curveball or something and somebody might fall off the bench and they have to pick themselves up. I'm not saying everybody in my team's perfect, but things do happen. But we have an account control officer that oversees all their work and catches it the very next week, the very next day. So it never goes very far. The one thing we don't want you to do is we don't want you to have bad metrics. We don't want you to have bad statistics. We want that billing team to be at the top of its profession metric-wise and statistically. That's how you're going to know whether you're getting good quality billing or not, is what do the stats tell me? What are the operating metrics that this team is working off of? I'm going to go over that more in part three. So stay tuned and tune into our next episode here in billing for part three. But if you're in-house and you're hiring staff for billing, here's what you want to look for for those of you that are still struggling with the in-house. Somebody who has not the highest aptitude in the world, because if they have a very high aptitude, like a therapist who wants to be challenged with new things, new ideas, new patients, new new situations to work out of, a biller who has that is going to get bored quick because the work is pretty routine. It's regular. It's day to day. They're going to constantly be looking for the next promotion, the next change, the next dynamic. You don't have that in billing. It's, it's, it's a lot more of the same. Find somebody who has clear analytical thinking, okay? You don't want the drama. You don't want the emotional person. So when you're interviewing, ask questions about organization and methodical thinking and sequential processing and um, things of that nature. I personally love it when my biller comes into work, throws their headphones on, sits at their keyboard and just for eight hours a day, takes a break, four hours in, comes back, does it again, goes home, and they love their job. They're just rocking and rolling. I mean, we have 60-some billers in 30 different states, so that's how we're able to grow so fast and keep taking new business on on a regular basis because our training, training, training is the paramount situation for success. That's the next thing for in-house billing. If you're going to have a successful in-house billing department, you must have an ongoing ongoing training system so that they can stay up to date with all the changes, especially coming from Medicare and the insurances and the new electronic systems. Go to a state-of-the-art EMR system. Here's the third thing you should look for with, with good billing. is a, is a group that can actually work the front end, back end, and reporting end of your EMR system. It has to be very comprehensive and intuitive. Customizable is ideal. If you have the right EMR system, you should be able to get from any screen to any other screen you want to get to in three clicks or less. So look for that. Without the proper tools, your staff is limited. That's why with our billing team, we have a lot of people, like I told you, 60-some. I think it's 64 to be exact. We will bill off of multiple EMR programs, but it's really about five or six total. We won't go into the other ones because we don't find them to be worthy. We don't find them to be as effective and as helpful and as organized and as systematic as they should be. You can use them, you can work with them, but they're not as good as the rest. And even of the five or six that we actually advocate, that we actually work with, some are better than others for different people for different reasons. They're not all the same. So just wanted to be honest with you about that. Some owners, you know, owners aren't all the same. Some owners really evaluate heavily based on documentation. Others evaluate heavily based on reporting. Others want to see more um, tech involved, like home exercise programs and portals and things like that. Hey, that's all great. Know what's important to you and know what you're looking for. Back to my billing. It's all about the stats. 
When you have the right person who's accountable and responsible, who initiates conversation, doesn't wait to be caught or found out, is willing to actually bring problems to your awareness because they own it and they're accountable, you absolutely have the best person. But now you have the responsibility, if you're not outsourcing, to statistically measure their performance. Do you know what those stats are? Do you know how to get those stats and get that data? Do you know what software spreadsheets you need to gather it so that you can manage them? And would you be comfortable enough to actually give them direction you know you got to ask yourself like are you comfortable with that are you are you confident in your billing knowledge if not outsource it you're only going to pay for what you get so that's it let's stay tuned for part three where i'm going to dive into some of the most important metrics that you should know about when running a billing department whether it's in-house or outside